Did you know that 60% of Americans want to become billionaires? This is according to the Harris Polls American and Billionaire Survey, where they ask you as adults representing different generations from Gen Z to millennials to Gen X and boomers. I mean, who wouldn't want to become that rich, right? I think most of us do. We all dream of having luxurious homes and fancy cars and going on vacations multiple times a year without worrying about the money. Even though more than half of these adults want to be billionaires, the gap between between the rich and the poor has increased over the past decade. According to the Federal Reserve data, as of the last quarter of 2021, the top 1% of US households held 32.3% of the country's wealth. On the other hand, the bottom 50% only had 2.6% of the wealth. We don't need any more proof. Just looking at these numbers, the wealth disparity in America between the rich and the poor is too obvious. So here's a question. Why is there such a large gap between the rich and the poor despite the staggering 60% of the US adults wanting to become billionaires. Shouldn't this at least lessen the gap because of the desire to do so? Please let me know what you think by leaving some comments down below. So here's what I think. People just want to become a billionaire and after all, human beings are designed to want more. But not everyone is willing to go against what they are used to. Many resist change and others do things that are opposite of what they should do to achieve financial goals. So in today's video, I'll share with you three things that you should avoid if you want to become wealthier. These things are seemingly normal and seem pretty harmless, but if you want to be a part of that top one percent, these things should definitely go away. Hi, my name is Munif Ali. I'm a self-made multimillionaire who started this channel to share my life experiences so that I could teach you how to become more successful. If you like this type of content, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. First on our list is working for every dollar. If you're working nine to five, great. It's a mandatory 40 hour week and I have nothing against nine to five jobs. Is your pay rate equivalent to how many hours you work? If so, I have bad news for you though. If you're only working to make money and the only way is a job that requires you to render a certain amount of hours per week, then your chances of getting to a multimillionaire status is pretty slim. I'm not trying to tell you that working a full-time job is bad. They're great. If you're earning a decent amount of money, great. If you have a comfortable life, great. If you can take a vacation once in a while and not go into debt, great. When you only have a regular job and your time equals your money, not so great if you're not utilizing that money. In other words, every time you miss work, you lose a dollar. And unless, of course, you have some kind of sick leave or leave in incentives in place. It would be great. My point is, it is never enough. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average salary for the U.S. employee is $54,132 per year. Let's say you're 24 now, you'll be working another 36 years and you are diligently saving 10% of your income for retirement. When you reach the age of 60, you will have a total savings of $194,875.20. That's not a small amount of money and it's still by far less than ideal. And thinking that you have worked almost your entire life, you're lucky if you are among the 5.4% of the population earning more than $150,000 a year, you'll get at least $540,000 when you retire. Thing is, it is difficult to reach an ideal life with just one job. So you need to find out what works for you. And my case, I invested. I have businesses. Others juggle multiple jobs and side gigs, but don't just rely on one job unless you're paying, getting paid a great amount. There are plenty of options available. You just need to find what works for you. There have been plenty of people who have worked for the postal office or other jobs that make less than the 54,000, but they've amassed wealth by saving up their money, by diligently investing, by buying real estate, by buying stocks. So it's not just, yeah, you want to increase the amount of money you make, but also you need to understand that more importantly, you need to devise a way to invest that money. When I say save, I mean save for the fact of investing, not just getting some little teeny tiny amount from some savings plan. The whole thing is you're saving to invest and I want to make that part clear. So great if you can make more income and if you can't and you've got a couple of things going, it doesn't matter as long as you're able to look at investing in a long-term way. Number two is keeping up with the Joneses. Sometimes you see our neighbors, friends, family members having something like a grand house, a flashy car, or limited edition clothing and we tend to want to have those things in our lives and it would be great if you were using that desire to fuel your motivation and push towards achieving your own financial goals. But if the mindset is getting it your way, like buying expensive things, even if it's way above your means, or try to keep up with their appearances so that you don't feel lesser when you attend a class or a family reunion or a community party, just to keep up with them, then you should stop that. Wearing expensive clothes and brand name items and luxurious goods when you can't afford them doesn't make you rich. It makes you look rich, but you are essentially going broke. It's like a child wearing grandma's shirt. You feel like you're mature, but you just look silly in the end. It 
doesn't fit your lifestyle. On top of it all, when you're trying to keep up with the Joneses because you think that people are looking at your every move and at what clothes you wear, what kind of car you drive, what type of house you live in, come on, get off of your high horse. Not everybody's gonna notice everything about you. Not everyone's going to care what you drive or what you wear. Sure, are there some people? Yeah, but those are low grade people that, that measure you by what you're wearing or what you're driving. You need to hang around people who don't think of you in those type of ways. Other people are also busy doing everything they can to live the life they want. They don't have much luxury to care about your every single move and appearance. So instead of caring so much about what other people, take care of yourself more and do something productive instead. Something that will get you closer to that million dollar net worth. There are some great habits to emulate. If people are buying real estate or if they're buying stocks, but don't go in it trying to compete. Learn as much as you can from people who are doing it and then go out there and do it. So if it fuels your fire and you get motivated, that's absolutely fine. But don't do it just because you want to catch up and look like the Joneses. And let's go on to number three, choosing the path of least resistance. Did you know that your brain is genetically programmed to resist change? That's why most of us choose the path with at least the least amount of resistance. We do things that we are used to, things that make us feel comfortable with very little change, as much as we can tolerate. Because when we try to change drastically, this part of our brain called the amygdala would interpret that as a threat and release hormones of fear, fight, or flight. And more often than not, people would choose to flee. Because their resistance to change is greater than their desire to change, you might be wondering why I'm talking about human psychology here. Well, it's because when you look at the people in the top 1%, most of them get there because people did something drastic, something unconventional, something above average that the average person wouldn't do because of the fear and resistance to change. So let's look at Iron Man Elon Musk's success. He's a man with big dreams and big plans. But what sets him apart from, I would say, average people is that he's also a man of action and decisiveness. Whether you agree with him or not, he takes action. Remember that 60% of US adults want to be a billionaire. And how many of them do you think would be willing to work multiple jobs and sleep at their factory and you know work 180 hours a week? How many of them do you think are ready to leave their current job to do something different? How many of them do you think are willing to read a book multiple times a day? I bet some would think about it and try it at first, but I think only a few would take it seriously. If that 60% put in the work, America would be flooded with millionaires and billionaires right now. But that 1% remains. 1% for a reason. And don't tell me things like, no, we're not going to do anything wrong because we're just biologically programmed to resist change. Yeah, I did say that, but our response is not limited to flight, but also to fight. Human beings are also capable of change. There is a formula developed by Gleischer to guide us on how to counter that resistance. And that is D times V times F should be greater than your resistance. D is your dissatisfaction. Let's say you're broke. Then V is your positive vision for the future, which is earning $1 million net worth without working nine to five. Your F is your first concrete step. Let's say your first step would be learning how to earn through passive income or what work you would do to increase your income sources. In other words, your dissatisfaction coupled with your strong desire and decisive action should be greater than the resistance you face. That's how you trick your mind into surrendering to change. There's no shortcut to becoming rich or wealthy or successful. You need to put in some work and think about how you can increase your income streams, whether through investing, working multiple jobs, or going into business. Think about what works for you. Then stop comparing your life to others. We all have different paths and we may even have different starting points. So focus on yourself and think about how you can reach your financial goals. For example, me growing up in the projects and not really having a whole lot of role models around, I could easily make excuses on why I'm not supposed to have one, but think differently. Lastly, try doing something to reach your goals is not a very comfortable journey, especially not the multi-million dollar net worth arena. But all you could do is to be comfortable with uncomfortable situations, especially if you're still starting in your journey. That's all for today, guys. I hope that you learned something valuable. And if you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell for more content like this one. And if you want to learn more about improving your finances, go ahead and check out this video next five tips on how to improve your personal finance.